no question the quad rotor vehicle in the last few years has been incredibly enabling for my research group and, and lots of other research groups around the world. And it's also incredibly enabling for a lot of businesses. We're seeing a lot of businesses start up at, you know, around the quad rotor vehicle. But at the same time, these vehicles have obvious limitations. They're very power intensive, energy intensive. You, you're spending most of your power just trying to keep, stay up in the air. Fixed wing vehicles, clearly a uh, lot, lot more efficient flight, can stay up for, for much, much longer. But in cluttered environments, uh, having a minimum speed in order to stay up in the air it is a limitation, the need for a runway, et cetera. I am pretty interested and pretty excited about the growth of hybrid vehicles uh, that we've seen uh, recently, whether it's tail sitters or uh, vehicles with two propulsion uh, systems, um, tilt rotors, tilt props, uh, you know, th there's a lot of potential there. These ideas have been explored pretty regularly throughout the history of aviation. Um, I think enough things have changed that make it worthwhile to go back and look at these things again. The things that have changed are uh, electropulsion power density small scale vehicles, um, our ability to manufacture small scale vehicles, our ability to put computation on board, and modern control systems mean that the things that we thought we could do or the things that we thought were hard might actually be relatively easy now. When you think about autonomous systems bringing sensor data into their understanding of the world. There's some real computational challenges that oftentimes it's mathematically relatively easy to write down what you want the answer to look like, but actually computing that answer can be uh, very demanding and outside the scope of real-time systems like robots or UAVs. And so a lot of my research has, involves finding useful approximations that give you very, very good answers um, at the cost of a little bit of loss of accuracy or precision. Um, but that loss of accuracy and precision is rarely fatal to the system, and what it does is it allows you to really get something to work in a way that you couldn't before. So, for example, I and my students demonstrated a fixed-wing vehicle carrying a laser range finder flying around in a very, very tightly constrained environment, the, the state of parking garage. That's a very high-dimensional system that if you were to just naively start incorporating the laser range finder, into the full state estimate of, of the 12 degrees of freedom of the vehicle, the computation would get in, intractable if, if done not carefully. But if you actually break the problem apart into the bits of the system the laser can actually see at any one time, and then actually think carefully about how that little bit of information that propagates in the rest of the system, you, you actually get the right answer, but much more efficiently than if you just ask the laser to reason about the entire system at once. And so oftentimes that kind of structure in the, the, the inference, the reasoning, honestly that kind of structure in the math that gives you very efficient approximation uh, algorithms to these uh, problems of reasoning and inference that drive autonomy um, that make the systems go.